Hello everyone, I hope you are doing all right. Welcome to Video Learning. We are going to study adherence junctions. They are one of the kinds of protein complexes that bring cells together and keep them attached to one another in a tissue. They are really important. Basically, what they do is connect the microfilaments, the actin microfilaments of one cell to those of its neighbors. And they organize themselves in the membrane by making adhesion belts like those that you can see in that drawing, surrounding the cell with bands of actin filaments connected to those of the neighboring cells through cadherins, the, kind of, the main kind of proteins in other junctions. These cadherins have something really special about them. By the way, this is a picture of what the proteins in an adherence junction look all together interacting with one another and with the microfilaments. We will talk about it in detail and about the names of each of those proteins later on. For now, I want to mention the fact that cadherins have another special function. They interact with other cadherins of the same type. We have multiple types of them. They interact homotypically, that is, with proteins of the same type in the neighboring cell. And that has a really neat consequence. And it is the fact that if you put, for example, three different types of cells, each of them expressing one type of cadherins, let's say type 1 cadherins, type 2 cadherins, and type 3 cadherins, and you leave them room to move enough time, over time, they will group into groups of the same type of cadherin because they will only be able to attach to other cells of that same type. And that is a really important mechanism for the structuring of organs of tissues during development. We will talk a lot more about these kind of systems during developmental biology, but for now, let's just say that adherence junctions and cadherins in particular are really important for that. Finally, another function of adherence junctions is mechanotransduction. That means giving information to the cell and making it change its behaviors, maybe by upregulating the expression of some genes, maybe by activating or deactivating or recruiting to a specific place of the cell certain proteins. Depending on the mechanical, physical, the response to movement properties of neighboring cells in this case, because they are attached to other cells. For example, because the adherence junctions are connected to the actin microfilaments and those actin microfilaments have myosin which can pull on them kind of like our muscles do with actin and myosin, you've probably already heard of that. The same can happen inside individual cells with these fibers of microfilaments being able to pull on the adherence junction. Now, depending on how stiff the neighboring cell is, how rigid or resistant to pulling it is, these adherence junctions will either be pulled in in the direction that the microfilaments are pulling or they will stay in place if the neighboring cell is resistant to tension and it will be proteins in that adherence junction that will stretch, revealing binding sites for other signaling proteins and starting a signaling cascade, basically telling the cell how stiff the neighboring cells and the surrounding tissue is. And that can be important for cells. We will see the same thing happening with another kind of cell additions, the focal additions. All right, I think that's enough of its functions. Now we can talk about the specific details of how you build one other junction. what proteins you need to make it effectively connect cells together through the actin filaments. So let's do it. Now this can get pretty complex, so I'm going to explain it in several different levels of complexity going from the very basics that you will probably find in most university books and courses to some very specific details about the proteins in here. So that you can choose how much you want to study and to remember about the topic. So, this is a membrane. It will have to be bound to another membrane. And in order to do that, it needs transmembrane proteins. The main one in other instructions is cadherin. We have already talked about that. Cadherin will connect to the actin microfilaments, but it doesn't do this directly, as it happens with all the intercellular junctions which connect the cytoskeleton of one cell to that of another cell, it needs adapters. 
that he rings needs two basic adapters. One of them is beta catenin. Beta catenin interacts with the cadherin, but it can't bind to the actin microfilaments directly either. Alpha catenin can bind to actin microfilaments, but it cannot bind to the cadherins. However, beta catenin and alpha catenin can bind to one another, and that is how cadherins bind to the actin microfilaments through beta catenin and alpha catenin. This is the basic idea, but we can go a bit further. Alpha catenin doesn't only interact with the actin microfilaments directly, it can also use other adapters. The main two ones are vinculin and alpha actinin. Don't mix up alpha actinin and alpha catenin, they are not the same proteins. These super proteins, vinculin and alpha actinin, are pretty important. You will see them in the context of other junctions and other ways of cells to adhere to the substrates, to the extracellular matrix, like in focal additions, for example. And we can go even further. We have mentioned two catenins, beta catenin and alpha catenin. But there's a third one involved in cadherin addition. That is the P120 catenin. It binds to the cadherin and it does so closer to the membrane than the beta catenin. It doesn't interact with alpha catenin or other proteins like that, so it's not as important and some books and professors decide to not mention it to make things easier. But if you want to learn about it, there it is. This is what I wanted to mention about cadherins in adherence junctions, but they are not the only transmembrane protein in there. So let's grade it out for now and talk about the other transmembrane protein, nectin. Nectin is an immunoglobulin, kind of like antibodies, but involved in cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. It will interact with other nectins in the neighboring cell. Nectin can also interact with actin microfilaments in the interior of the cell, but again, it needs adapters. The main adapter for nectin is afadin. Afadin is kind of like a combination of beta catenin and alpha catenin, at least in function, not in structure, but in function. It can bind to the nectin, the transmembrane protein, sort of like beta catenin did, and it can also bind to the actin microfilaments sort of like alpha catenin did. Going a bit deeper, because why not? We can also mention the fact that afadin can recruit vinculin and alpha actinin, as alpha catenin did. And this can also help to recruit more actin filaments to the other end junction. We can even mention the proteins that afadin uses to do that. For vinculin, it uses poncin, and for alpha actinin, it uses adip, although it also has other names. But this is very niche, it's very, very specific, and you won't find it mentioned in most books or university courses. But maybe if you read papers about other exemptions, you see those names mentioned, and I think it can be useful to have a bit of an idea of what they are, what they do. As I said, this has a lot of detail. This would be a simplified version with most of the important stuff in it. And this would be an even more simplified version, which might be okay even for most university courses. I leave it up to you to decide what you want to remember. What I can't recommend enough is for you to use the flashcards program Anki. You can download the image occlusion add-on and use it to cover up the names of the proteins or the functions that you want to remember and have the program test you on them. There's a ton of information online on how to use it, and I'm going to make my own videos explaining how I use it and how you can use it with the kind of slides that I'm making. When I do that, I will link those videos here and in the description. As always, you can also download the slides from the channel's website, flipyourlearning.com. The next video I'm gonna make is going to be about desmosomes, which also use cadherins, but connect not the microfilaments, but the intermediate filaments which are stronger and more resistant and really, really important for our bodies. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Hasta pronto!